I have talked about a lot of information so far, and I haven't even begun to cover the actual editing. If you have taken the time out to create your own templates and tones, then getting to this point in the process is quick and easy since most of the work has already been done. Post-production is about 85% preparation, organization, and setup. You really need to be meticulous and methodical so you don't lose your mind later. That mindset even applies when simply just checking out and screening the project. There is so much information to be gained by simply watching the picture and even more work to organize and make sense of all that information. But before that even happens, just simply watch. Just check it out as someone who was not a part of the project. Watch the project with an open, empty mind with no technical things bouncing around in your head. Make an emotional checklist. What is the intention of the visual? What's it about? How does it make you feel? What characters jump out at you? How do they make you feel? And so on. Making films or TV shows or any other visual mediums is about telling a story and conveying emotion. Your job as a dialogue editor is to help convey that emotion and help tell that story. So the first thing I will always do once I'm on a project is just watch it. And I'll make notes. Lots and lots of notes of anything that jumps out at me. I may be watching a rough cut, so it's not the same thing as watching the final theatrical print that is playing in theaters or wherever, but there is still so much that can be gained from that rough cut material. Enter the spotting session. The spotting session is an important part of the screening process. The spotting session is really all about watching the project in its entirety and making notes of what's happening on screen. Every person who is working in the post-production process is spotting the project in one way or another. Each one of them are looking for issues or things that specifically relate to what their jobs are. Now, depending on the size of the project, you may be spotting with an entire crew ranging from picture editorial, special visual effects, sound, director, etc. Or you may be watching it with just the director in his or her living room. Regardless who's involved or where you're watching it, this is a super major important part of the process. Your specific role in the spotting session is all about taking a really good listen to the dialogue. Listen to its quality in every scene, the room tone, how it transitions between shots, background noise, and anything that directly affects the dialogue. After watching the picture a few times, it's time to catalog all the things that may be issues or problematic. This is why spotting sessions are so important. Any issues or any problems are caught and noticed during the spotting session. All problems or potential problems are cataloged so that each one can be dealt with later. All right, so how's that done? It's pretty easy, not at all complicated, although it's a lot of work that is needed. Spotting sessions are all about catching things that may be problematic or for even generating ideas. So it's all about capturing as much information as you can. This is what a generic spotting sheet looks like. How it breaks down is pretty simple. You can set up and use something like an Excel document since it's pretty universal and works for both Mac and Windows. Here's a spotting sheet as an Excel document. This is the way a spotting sheet works. It starts with the name of the event or a queue, and that event may or may not get a marker in Pro Tools. The start time of the event and when it ends express this time code address. The duration or length of the event. Now this next column is identifying whether the sound is synced with an actual visual cue, say like here in this scene where the character slams the box on the hood of the car. Since this sound happens once, it doesn't have a length or duration per se. It just occurs at one precise moment. And in the sync column, I will put in sync, since it clearly is tied to the visual event of the guy slamming the box in the hood of the car. Non-sync does refer to a sound that does tie in with a visual cue on screen, but is not specifically in sync with the visual. Say, like the background noise of the traffic when it changes shot angles. The sound of the traffic has a start time and an end time depending on shot and may or may not have a duration, but it's not specifically synced to any one particular event or action on screen. It's a group of events that are making that background traffic noise. So in this case, I'm gonna put non-sync. Now a good spotting sheet will have a column for notes and maybe a few extra columns for anything else that you may think of at the time of the spotting session. A spotting sheet like this will be used by everybody on the sound team, but since I would be editing the dialogue, I'm going to be focusing on any problems relating to the dialogue specifically. Now, every shot change will be uneven and not very smooth as the dialogue changes between angles, and there's going to be a ton of these. Now, I know what I need to do to them, so I'm not going to write down every single angle change 
Otherwise, this is just going to take forever. More so, I'm going to be looking for specific problems like any major pops or clicks or maybe no really obtrusive or offending background noise like in this scene here. Something you want to tell me? What's wrong with your leg? Is that where you've been on your there is a really bad background noise coming from the compressor of a fridge nearby and lasts for the entire scene. Now, I know I'm going to have to deal with this, so I'm going to mark this event starting at 1 hour, 18 seconds, 18 frames. And it's going to end at 1 hour, 1 minute, 55 seconds, 22 frames. And since the actors are on screen, as they speak for most of the scene, I'm going to put sync. And I will write down in the notes section to remind myself that the sound of the compressor is loud and maybe I want to see if there's some alternate takes I can look for that may have better sound. And now I'll just continue watching the entire picture and keep stopping and marking down everything that I think will need my attention once I start editing. Now you may want to mark down all the scene changes and transitions as well. You can note all these scene changes in the same spotting sheet or you may want to put them in a separate spotting sheet specifically for scene changes. It may seem like a lot of work. All right, it is a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie. But if you have this information beforehand, it will be so much easier for you later as you go to specific sections and get to editing rather than trying to find things during the editing process. With a spotting sheet, you know where to go, you know what the problem is, and you can get to it and deal with it quickly rather than hunting for problems. The pre-planning stage is so vital and important as it will help you save time during the editing and the spotting session is part of that. Good tools to use for spotting sheets are Excel, as you can customize the spotting sheet. Of course, there is the old manual way of pen and paper, but that's just crazy talk. And there's also dedicated programs for spotting sheets, like this one called Q Tracker. It's a free program and is geared towards music cues, but it can be used for any kind of spotting session. You can add a cue or an event by clicking on the Add Cue icon, then by double-clicking on the name of the cue opens up the detail window. Click on the Spotting tab and you can input the time in and time out, give a name to the queue and add any notes. And there's all kinds of other useful data and parameters that you can assign to the queues as well. Really, really great tool. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about breaking down scenes.